This is Twit. What's some other Google stories that we can talk about here? I want to see if we can keep it locked into Google for a bit. We've got oh oh actually this is this is uh, interesting. Okay, so what's the li- what's the latest version of Android that launched officially? What is it? Is it Android 12? 12? 12, right? 12? 12. 12. No, 12. wrong. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Android 12 came out a week ago and we already have a new version of Android on the horizon. Oi. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> yeah, this is weird, but it but it totally happened today. What, did it uh, fix this wallpaper color? <laughs> no, this isn't even, <laughs> this isn't even an incremental update on like bug fixes and security patches and everything. This is like a new version oh, wow. of Android called Android 12L. And uh, this was shown off at uh, Android Dev Summit, which happened today. So it's a developer sun- summit that Google puts on. And uh, they talked all about Android 12L, which we had heard previously that there was a p- potentially a point release that would be coming a little bit later. I don't know if, uh, yeah, I think on, on Twig you guys had discussed at least to some degree that there were rumors that there was a possibility that Google would release a foldable device during the Pixel event. And oh, the, right. the, the rationale around this was, okay, if, if that was to happen, it would have to happen by the end of the year. That's what some of the leaks said. And there would be a new version of Android to enable it. Turns out that this is the new version of Android to enable it. We still know nothing about a Pixel foldable, but Google uh, showed off and kind of sp- uh, spilled out the the roadmap for this next version of Android. It's all about tablets and foldables. Uh, brings oh. a bunch of uh, functionality for larger screen devices running Android and as well, you know, kind of like usability uh, tweaks that are better, that improve the foldable experience. So like a bottom um, bottom of the screen taskbar, similar to what you'd see, you know, on a on just a regular a desktop OS, something like that inside of Android. Some enhancements to split screen and, and some of those... Uh, you know, navigating or, or pulling an, uh, an app from your taskbar and putting it into the, the one screen, having your second screen be a, a completely different app. Uh, different, different changes to the notification panel, quick settings. So I don't know how much of this we're going to see. Like this, this isn't going to affect the OS that's running on our phones. But if you're going to get so into the Kevin foldable Tofold space, you might. Just texted me. If you go to aboutchromebooks.com, you'll see on the top. Um, there's also speculation about what it would do to mobile apps in Chromebooks. Oh. He says, he says meh. He says, he, he, <laughs> meh, <laughs> like he doesn't care? Me, or I think he doesn't, doesn't quite believe that it's going to be a sort of change. Kevin will correct me yeah. if I'm wrong here. Oh, and so I'm, I'm curious to know that as well, actually, um, if that would reach into there or because, I mean, Chrome OS is different than Android OS and this is an Android uh, version update. So I'm not I'm not entirely sure unless what what he's talking about is that the apps that are created with Android 12 L or whatever it's going to be called in mind would need to also operate on Chromebooks because Chromebooks well, and, do and also do Android things that, that Android has pro- or that, that Chromebooks have problems with. Well, I, I would actually, that's the wrong way to put it probably. Um, we Chromebook users you, who occasionally use Android apps would wish they would do things like resize smarter and, mm. and, 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 and do other things and, and they don't necessarily. Right. So he's yeah, not sure. Yeah, let me say that on the iOS side too with, Apps not necessarily resizing properly for iPads, so. Yep, yep. Uh, it's it's weird. We still have the bifurcated OSs, the the the, yeah. the, the computer OS and the phone OS, and they haven't come together. I'm mean, just it's been a long time. They keep saying people keep saying that they're going to, and then it keeps not happening. Exactly. Right. It'll happen when we get the when we get flying cars and paperless offices. We'll finally get. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait for the end. Wait, wait for the end. Yeah. I mean, I think one thing that's interesting uh, to me about this is that, you know, it, yes, it's about foldables, but it's also about tablets. And I feel like tablets, Android and tablets have not been something that ha- it, that's been an experience, an experiment that hasn't always gone very well. Except right? for and my Google- beloved Nexus 7. 
Well, yeah, that, that's and that's that's kind of what I was gonna what I was actually gonna follow up with is that there was a time when Google had a lot of energy around was putting a lot yeah. of energy into tablets, right? Android 3.0 yeah. was honeycomb. That was the first version of Android designed specifically for tablets or or with tablets in mind. Eventually, they came out with the Nexus 7, and you're like, okay, I like where this is headed. And then somewhere along the line, it kind of fell off a cliff, yeah. And which is not to say that Android yeah. tablets don't exist, but Google's certainly not putting a lot of its uh, attention no. or energy into it. They just don't seem it. to care, Yeah, which is too bad. Yeah. I think they could have. It is. I think that was a potential opportunity, but obviously they didn't think it was worth investing in. Scooter X in chat is pointing out that this uh, Android 12L is also coming to phones. Okay, so that's, I, I was wondering if it was just going to be isolated to like certain sizes of screens or whatever, but um, I guess this would be all baked into 12 once that happens. They've got, they've, they basically spelled out the, um, the roadmap for the, for the beta. And I think sometime by like February or March, we're probably going to see a, uh, see the version, you know, there's going to be a number of betas leading up to that, but it makes me wonder like, okay, so then if this is the OS update that would pave the way for Google's supposed foldable pixels, uh, of which there's been a lot of, I would say, credible rumors around, um, maybe that means that we're going to see, you know, pixel foldables middle of next year, something like that. Would would anyone here be interested? Like actually be like buying buying this phone interested if Google was to put out a foldable or no. 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 I was interested in foldable devices, the the Surface Duo two, is that what it's called? Yeah. From Microsoft, yeah. the latest one. I was mm -hmm. really interested in that because I thought the form factor made sense even with the hinge right there in the middle and splitting the screens and all of that. Until I saw um, some reviews on it and the functionality just didn't quite, didn't just, just didn't seem like it would work well, uh, mm -hmm. especially if you wanted to do things quickly, uh, having to open. And I don't know if that would be the case with the Google's version, um, if you'd be able to do things quickly from it, just like you would if you pulled a camera out, pulled your smartphone out of your pocket, would you need to pull it out and unfold it and unlock it and yada, 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 yada. It, it's, no. I saw so the part of the me, Best yes, Buy. Another part, no. <laughs> Maybe when I was in Best I'm Buy, old, trying to I just don't. I don't understand why. I don't see the appeal of a foldable phone. I just don't. I don't get it. So Matthew, I agree I, with you. I thought I was. I was laughing at it. Um, but then I went to Best Buy to try to figure out my Chromebook situation, which is a whole other story. And <laughs> and and I stopped by to see not only the um, the six Pro, but then looked at the foldables again, and the and the, and the vertical fold which Leo likes too, is really appealing. Uh, I don't know Z why fit. it is. And it probably is awkward. And it's probably too big for the, when it's folded for the pocket. I don't know why. I guess yeah, I just look at it, it and in say, your pocket? Oh, like it kind of works, but it kind of works. Because yeah, what you end up with is a phone. You end up with a vertical yeah. phone. Right? Mm -hmm. Rather but where than do you put it phone, when it's folded? It sense. In, you put it in, in your purse. pocket? Because now it's a double with, like it's double thickness phone. Yes, it's a visible That's painting line of phones. Yeah. yeah, it ends up I mean, being maybe kind of like a smaller a or square. Yeah. 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 But yeah. double the yeah, thickness. It's, it's anyway. It's new yeah. VPL. The kids can have it. <laughs> <laughs> there we I go. Yeah. The Pixel 6 they, they, is could, they could do their TikTok sure. on it. Those that's kids. right. And Samsung will be perfectly happy if that's exactly what happens. I don't know. The Z Flip 3 is, is actually a, a pretty cool device, but... At which when I played around with it, um, and I think Leo actually has it and, and kind of shares my opinion on it, it, it seems like the first foldable that's like, okay, I could see this one doing really well. And I'm, I'm curious now that we're a couple of you know months after it's been released, how it's actually um, how it's actually sold. I don't know that I've seen any exact numbers as far as that's concerned, but it really did seem like the first foldable that had, um, it, at least in my use, in my mind, more of a consumer appeal um, for a number of reasons. So uh, Surface Duo 2, yeah, I'm not sure how, how consumer appeal, yeah, how much consumer appeal that, that device yeah. has. But, yeah. you know, we're still trying to figure out how where these things actually fit into place, why we need to have them, you know.